now so the next thing that you need to visualize now is going to be on your pass issue basically so on your pass issue you need to know that you are supposed to bring out elements for your um for your identification in your pass issue for for your risk factors in your past issue so in the past issue you need to know that what well, the first element in the past issue of obstetrics and gynecology we have the antenatal care which is the first element is it clear after the antenatal care we have the obstetrics issue is it clear the obstetrics issue in the antenatal care you must speak if the woman has well, have done any antenatal care and the care the first element is the laboratory investigations after the laboratory investigation you speak about the prophylaxis you speak about first the um the the ultrasound that the woman has done normally you should do three ultrasounds is it uh, in each trimester after the <coughs> ultrasound she has done you must speak also about the next which is um, um the the prophylaxis of the patient is it uh, speak about the prophylaxis and lastly you speak about the maternal health so after speaking about all this, you now go to the obstetric issue. The next issue is the gynecologic issue. Is it clear? You have now the gynecologic issue. In the obstetric issue, you speak about the number of pregnancies the woman had and all the miscarriage she had. In the gynecologic issue, you also bring out the element. So you see that in the case of a preeclampsia or a hypertensive heart disease, from the obstetric issue, you can bring out the obstetric risk factors of the pregnancy. Is it clear? So you can bring out all the obstetric risk factors of preeclampsia from the obstetric issue and all the like. Is it clear? So after now visualizing it, I'm going to now bring out the next chapter which is a introduction to the hypertensive heart disease because if you have to speak about preeclampsia you must know the other hypertensive heart disease and how you need to visualize them <coughs> Now, you need to know that what when you want to understand the different hypertensive, the hypertensive um, disease in pregnancy, sorry, not hypertensive disease, hypertensive disease in pregnancy, is it clear? When you want to understand the hypertensive disease in pregnancy, you need to first draw a table. The table you have the hypertensive diseases, the name of the hypertensive diseases. You have the gestational age at which the hypertensive disease occur. That's the first element. After the gestational age, we have to speak about the blood pressure of the hypertensive disease at which you occur. We have to speak about the proteinuria of the hypertensive disease. You have to speak about if there is a presence of a sign of severity. If there are any presence of sign of severity. And the next thing that you have to speak about, you have to speak about um, if there is a presence of convulsion. The next thing you have to speak about, you have to please speak about if there is a presence of the herb syndrome. Is it clear? So those are the different elements that you must speak about when you are speaking about the hypertensive diseases. Now you need to know that there are different hypertensive diseases in pregnancy. The first one is gestational hypertension. Is it clear? So if you have a patient that has an increase in blood pressure, is it clear? After 20 weeks of gestation, you have an increase in blood pressure. The cardiac suggestion hypertension that the blood pressure is increased after 20 weeks of gestation. The blood pressure is greater than 140 or over 90 meters of mercury, or you have an increase in blood pressure by 30 all over 15 millimeters of mercury. Is it clear? So those are the characteristics of increased blood pressure. When we say an increase in blood pressure, it doesn't always mean that the patient has a blood pressure of, of, of more than 140 over 90. Is it clear? If there is only an increase by a systolic of 30 and a diastolic of 15 millimeters of mercury, it means that that patient is also having gestational hypertension. So let's take an example. If you have a patient that usually is it clear? If you have a patient that usually has a blood pressure of, um, a, a patient that usually has a blood pressure of, <clears throat> let's say, 100 and, um, a patient that usually has a blood pressure of 100 all over, all over 70 millimeters of mercury. Is it clear? And now, during her pregnancy, she has a blood pressure of 130 all over 85 millimeters of mercury. Are you understanding? You see that this blood pressure is still within the normal range and this blood pressure is not considered as hypertension. 
music club but since she shifted from her normal blood pressure during her normal anc before 20 weeks of the session let's say that the blood pressure within the first um, um 20 weeks of anc was between 100 over 70 and then it has increased to 30 130 over 85 meters mercury after the first 20 weeks of the session it means that this is already considered as gestational hypertension are you getting it's already considered as hypertension and increase in blood pressure so it means that the increase in blood pressure does not only mean that you have an increase in more than 140 over 90 meters of mercury but you can also have a increase by this value 30 over 50 meters of mercury and similarly if you have a patient that usually has a blood pressure of 120 all over 70 meters of mercury and now the blood pressure is 140 all over 90 meters of mercury that is already a hypertension is it a hypertension disease in pregnancy is it good? now in gestational um, um, um in gestational hypertension you need to know that what the pro there is no proteinuria is it okay? the 24 hour urine sample and the deep seek is not going to show any proteinuria there is no sign of severity there is no convulsion there is no herb syndrome is it okay? now the second one you have chronic hypertension in a patient that has chronic hypertension you need to know that what the gestational um for the gestational HIV chronic hypertension occur is less than 20 of gestation, meaning that what the patient presents to you already with a blood pressure of more than 140 over 90 meters of mercury. Is it clear? And then all through after 20 weeks of gestation, the patient still have a blood. Let's say that you have a patient with 150 over 90 meters of mercury, and then after the change before the change of, of 20 weeks of gestation, she has this blood pressure, and then after the change of gestation, she still have the same blood pressure. It's still called is considered as a chronic hypertension. The hypertension is in pregnancy considered as a chronic hypertension. Is it clear? So the blood pressure has to be more than 140 over 90 meters of mercury. In this case, there is no protein. To know here, 